Hello and welcome to my video of learning curves and mistakes. As you can see, I'm diving right into it here. I'm using Caswell Plating's Nickel Crystals with Brightener, and I'm going to mix up the solution. Now this plating package also came with a bottle of liquid brightener to add, and I made a decision not to add it to the mix just to see what the plating would turn out like without it. So remember that for later. Now I'm going to make a test piece for plating. I'm also about to make a mistake, but I'll get to that later. This is a piece of aluminized exhaust pipe. I'm going to polish it in segments, incrementally, from 240 grit all the way up to 3000. Now you can't plate aluminum, so I have to make sure all of the aluminum coating is sanded off first. Also, polishing is really boring, so I'll spare you most of it. It's literally just sanding over and over again. And for the final pass, I'm going to use a buffer wheel with red rouge. But honestly, you can't really tell the difference between 3000 grit and polishing with the rouge. and it goes into a hot degreaser bath. It's just simple green and water. We have some distilled water in a spray bottle for rinsing, a fish tank air pump, and an air stone for agitation, and the plating solution. And this is my own special setup. It's a synchronous clock motor on a board that holds a little hook that will suspend the part in the plating bath and I'm using a couple of D cells to power the plating. I take the part out of the degreaser bath and give it a good rinse with distilled water and now it's ready to go into the plating bath. The hanger holding the part is pure titanium wire because titanium is inert and won't affect the solution. Please excuse the complete mess on top of my toolbox, a little work area I have there. And now we put in the pure nickel anode that will be sacrificed. I hooked up an ammeter to see how much current it was drawing. I have the ammeter set wrong here, but you can still see it working with the anode in and not when it's out. Then I calculated how long it should plate for. It's complicated math, and I did it wrong because I had the ammeter set wrong, and other reasons which I'll get to in a minute, and I had to do it over again. If I did my math right, it should take about 25 minutes to get an 8 micrometer thickness of plating on the part that I'm plating right now. And this is me slowly figuring out that if I want the reading in milliamps, I need to change the connections on the meter and not just the setting. Anyway, it's drawing about 260 milliamps, which I'm assuming is about right. Oh dear, that's not right at all, is it? It looks like it's plated in aluminum. Hmm. But at this point, I just kind of thought it was because I didn't add the brightener. And so what I did is I took a little brass fitting and plated that too, and it turned out the same way. So I decided to add the brightener.
Now that is much better. Now it looks properly nickel plated. It still has some patches of that white haze, but overall very good. Whatever is in that brightener did its job. The whole reason I did many different levels of sanding on uh, one piece was so that I could see the differences after I plated it. And also to see um, how perfect I needed to polish it in order to get a real mirror shine and it turns out if you want a real mirror shine it has to look that way before it goes into the plating bath. And here I've brought out one of my old vacuum cleaners wheels. It's also nickel plated but in 1938. So you can tell a little bit of difference between a modern plating and a vintage plating. The older one you can tell is a little bit more yellow, uh, but they are both shades of yellow, as nickel should be. Now, for the sake of experimentation, I decided to recreate my earlier problem I had without the brightener liquid in the Caswell solution when plating in nickel acetate, which is basically just nickel mixed in vinegar. So I've cut a new slice of pipe and polished it, and I'm attempting to plate it in the exact same way. And sure enough, it came out with the same problem, a white haze. However, I then noticed that the solution, the nickel acetate, no longer wanted to plate anything after I did that, at least not with the batteries anyway. And that's why I bought this new benchtop power supply, so I could control the voltage more accurately. And at low voltage, which the lower the voltage, the better for plating. At a low voltage, it just did not want to plate. It's not passing any current at all. Finally, I wound up raising the voltage, which anything with a high resistance, if you put more voltage through it, it will, more current will pass. And I got a result. And it looked pretty bad, actually. It was very patchy plating. It had patches of the white aluminum color on it. And here I'm trying using batteries again just to see if it passes any current, and it's not at all. And here I'm just playing around with it to see what the accuracy of the uh, cheap benchtop power supplies ammeter is, and it turns out it's pretty accurate. I should mention that by now I had decided that this white haze was actually aluminum contamination of the uh, plating solution, which I may or may not be right, but the inside of these exhaust pipes is aluminized as well as the outside, even though I took the outside coating off. Uh, and I'm thinking somehow or another it just like instantly reacts with the aluminum and it contaminates it and makes it uh, higher resistance or something and whatever the case whatever it is contamination or not caswell plating's uh, liquid brightener has some kind of chemical in it that mitigates that problem because there's nothing wrong with i can plate in the caswell solution just fine after adding it but the nickel acetate not having any sort of chemical like that is now apparently permanently contaminated because from here on, whatever I put in it comes out with that white haze on it. However, later, I did a little bit of research about plating bath contamination, and it seems like most of the time you can just plate stuff and keep plating stuff until eventually all the contamination just gets plated out, and then it'll be okay. But for the nickel acetate, I'm not going to worry about it. It's just a little bit of vinegar, no great loss.
Now this one just came out of the Caswell plating solution and it looks pretty okay and here we'll compare it to the uh, messed up one. And then I had a thought, well I'll take the messed up one and plate half of it as the Caswell solution. We'll plate over the messed up plating and that way we can get an actual side-by-side -side comparison. As you can see, the side on the left is not just white, it's also dull. Although I think the Caswell plating solution has chemicals in it to make it uh, turn out shinier. But still, you can see a big difference. I should also mention that before I deliberately contaminated the nickel acetate solution, it plated perfectly fine. I did many test pieces with it and everything came out just fine. Uh, maybe a little more yellow, like a nickel-y yellow than the Caswell solution, but that's, you know, that's nickel plate, it's yellow. I emailed Caswell and I asked them what gives with the white haze and I explained the situation and they said that I wasn't using enough current. And if you know anything about electricity, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, if you have a resistance and a voltage, then the current is a mathematical calculation of that. So the resistance of the solution and if the size of the item to be plated and the size of the anode and the distance apart they are and the resistance of the solution are all constant values. Mathematically, if you put a voltage in, you get a certain amount of current. You can't just magically make more current flow through it. So I don't think they know what they're talking about. Not to mention the fact that if I plate with a higher voltage in the contaminated nickel acetate, it will plate and it still has a white haze. It's still messed up. So ultimately I came to the conclusion on my own that the solution is contaminated by the aluminum. That's the only variable that I haven't accounted for. I have to say that uh, this whole experience for me was a one big learning curve and Quite frankly, it was something that I was, I don't know, afraid to do. I didn't want to do it. I, didn't, I was scared of learning it, which is strange because I'm usually all for trying new things and I just go in gung-ho, but this one just kind of like scared me, I guess, plating things. Anyhow, I'm over that now, uh, and I think I've got a firm grasp on it. And now I have a new number one rule. Keep aluminum the hell away from this stuff. And uh, it should be just fine. Hey, if you liked this video, don't forget to like this video. Consider subscribing, and thanks for watching.